No, this one's due on the 4th. That's why we have the due date right there. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm going to go through it now, and then you can just grab one later and then refill it out. Um, it's already in the book, so don't fill it out now. You can just kind of pay attention to uh, what we're going to be going through. All right, so this is our title opener fancy. Uh, the due date will be the 4th, so we will have some time to uh, work on this. Um, we will have some overlap between this assignment and our next assignment. So on the 4th, won't be a complete work day. We'll be starting the next part and then finishing this one up, okay? Um, we're using a fancy title bumper to use at the beginning of each of our projects. So in this one, we're actually creating the one we're gonna use. The first one was learning process, going through the steps. This one is gonna be the uh, better one. As you get more techniques, more tech tips and tricks and all these things throughout the class, you may want to update your title card at any point. Um, these kinds of things, should be something that within an hour or two hours, you can just pop a new one of these out, okay? So we'll be creating basic shapes and text. We did that on the last one still. Uh, animate using ease, speed graph, and motion blur. So that's new. We didn't do that on the first assignment because that's the boring one. Now that we know what we're doing, we're going to be using uh, easing, speed graph, and motion blur. We'll also be adding sound effects. We'll also be adding accents to the piece rendering it as a movie, and organizing. For the submission, you'll turn in your thumbnails and any artwork that you have. So if you have uh, images that you grab that you're using for reference, you'll turn those in. If you have um, thumbnails, which you should have both of these, you'll turn those in too, okay? Yes, sir. Why does the thumbnail turn in a sketchbook? Then you take a picture with your phone, or you scan it, print it, or throw it in your thing. Okay. okay? Um, so you'll turn in your project folder, which means everything inside there, your movie, everything. Sir. Uh, no, you can use the same thumbnails we had before and just enhance one of those. Yep, but just like the planning of where am I going to put those accent pieces? Where am I going to add those little like blips or whatever else to it? That's what I basically did for my sketchbook. I just took one of my already existing thumbnails. Mm -hmm. Right, and like I showed last time where I had the planning of uh, this thing's going to come in, I'm going to have these lines coming down, this is going to like scale up and I'll have these like um, circular radial lines pop around it, that kind of stuff you want to have planned out, okay? Uh, the movie will still be 4 to 6 seconds at 24 frames per second, 1280 by 720, and this will be worth 5 points, okay? And just to refresh your memory, if I find my image that I had right here. Um, so this is like more of the artwork planning phase, thumbnail phase of something like this, where I'm looking at how each, each piece is going to be animated and how each one of those blips or um, line work is going to happen on here. Okay. All right. So before I get into the um, building the assignment, I'm going to go in and find some um, audio clips, okay? We want to have some kind of sound effects, some kind of audio on here. Um, and we want to use stuff that uh, we are free to use, not just random stuff. So typically what I do, people ask what's my favorite website for sound effects, it's Google. You type in the sound effect you want, you type in royalty free, and usually you'll pull up a website that has that sound effect royalty free that you could use in your projects, okay? So if I'm looking for a snap sound effect, Right, all T free. I type that in. Um, Sound Bible is one that usually will come up. Um, so usually I end up there or a couple other websites. Uh, but here's different sound effects. Now, if I make sure that I'm playing through my speaker headphone jack, there it is. Let me make sure this is turned up. All right, so there's like a crackling fire, probably not something I may want. As I'm listening for sound effects, I'm not only listening for the entire thing, but I'm also listening for individual pieces. I may find one crackle that I like, and I want to use just that one crackle too, okay? So we don't have to use the whole sound effect um, inside here. Right, so the handcuff's clicking. 
a neck snapping slap, a really cartoony slap. Uh, let's turn the audio down just a smidge. There. <laughs> okay, a balloon popping. All right, so once I find one, I click on the thing here and I'm gonna download. Typically, you'll find two kinds of files, sometimes three kinds of files you can download. Um, WAVE, AIF, and MP3. MP3 is a compressed version, a compressed file format. After Effects doesn't play nicely with those. AIF or WAV are typically two good formats. Um, I always grab the WAV file, okay? So I click WAV, it would download that sound effect. I've already downloaded some sound effects, so I'm just going to use those. Um, where they are, right there. All right, and I'm gonna go to my P drive. I'm gonna go to my 1900 folder. I have my fancy title card folder I created. I have my sound folder, and I'm gonna drop in my sound effects there. Uh, then I'm gonna use another program called Audition. If you have the Adobe Cloud, that software is free with it. So you can use this uh, piece of software. If you're simply just like cutting a piece, um, you can use After Effects. You can just go in there and say, I want this part of it and use that. Typically, I like to process everything through Audition because it's a lot easier and I have a lot more control over it. Um, you'll notice a very similar type of interface. Up here is where I import stuff. Right here is where I work on stuff. Okay, So I can grab all three of these, drop them into this window, and here's the sound. So I double click, and there's the sound wave. If you've never seen a sound wave before, this is basically showing you the, um, the height of this is the volume of it, okay? We're not gonna see any words or anything fancy. If I hit play, I should see or hear uh, the animation. Okay, so there's a dinging, right? So let's say that I only wanted this end ding. I didn't want the other two. <clears throat> I can click and drag on that end ding I can also move my mouse right where that line is and drag it to adjust this, the position of it. And then I can go to edit and say crop. Just like you would in Photoshop, you select something, crop it, and it just isolates that one area. We could also zoom in. So if I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in. And I can slide this over. And I can eliminate stuff by grabbing it and deleting it. Okay, so it's very easy to um, go in here, grab what you need, much easier than it is in After Effects. After Effects is not as nice on audio files to edit them. Okay, so now I have that sound effect. Yeah, make a rap song. Uh, then I would just go ahead and save this as. It's going into my sound folder. I'm saving this as uh, ding bell clipped. Let's say that I wanted this to be a deeper sound. I wanted it to not be so high pitch. I wanted it to be a lower pitch to this. Um, there are, I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna go to effects and under time and pitch, these are all different effects you can add to this. So under time and pitch, I'm gonna go into um, pitch bender. It's always the wrong one, every single time. One day I'll get it right. Pitch shifter uh, and then hit play. Okay, so this is the same sound effect. But I'm going to take the semitones down, and now I have a different sound. So I may want to do that. If I go the other way, right? So now I have the ability to take this original sound and tweak it. Um, you could take something like wind blowing and take the pitch down, and it becomes very kind of like eerie, like a humming, like a, a bass or something. Um, you can also play with this. This is like the bigger one. This is like the big value here. So this is going to be large changes, and these will be smaller changes that we'll see, okay? All right, I have no need to change that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to close that one. I'll double click the next one and hit play, okay? So that one, there's nothing really to clip. It's exactly where I would want it. But let's say that I wanted to go into the pitch shifter And what I'm doing is I'm listening for what it sounds like, how fast it feels like it's coming out, and then picturing my animation of, let's say, the, um, 
something swiping across the screen. Right? If I go this way with it, that's getting like a reverb or something, like a bounce. It's too much. Right? It does sound like a nice swipe. All right, so we'll leave it there. So it adjusted a little bit. We will then go ahead and save this as whoosh, clipped, close it. I think I liked this sound at the end. Oops, come on. Uh, I'm going to hit this loop here so it only loops that area. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll crop that. All right. Uh, let's go into effects, pitch shifter. And even though I may not pitch shift this, typically I like to hear what they're going to sound like because I may not know until I hear it that that's what I wanted. Okay. Let's not loop that for now. All right, now let's go back. Exactly, right? And that's exactly what we're doing. As, as something hits, psh, that's going to be like my sound effect. So now I'm going to save this as door panel clipped. And then I'll close Audition. Uh, again, another tool to use. Audition is super awesome for doing that kind of stuff. Uh, let's close that, close that, close that, close this. All right. Uh, I'm going to open up my project I had before. Okay, so this was the one that I played with last time where I had um, all these different kind of assets uh, put together. Okay, so now I'm going to make my actual uh, end composition. I'm going to start to organize this too because this is getting really messy. So I'm going to make a new folder here called Compositions. And I'm just going to drop all of these compositions inside here. I'm also going to make another folder called Audio. And then I'm going to bring my audio in. Um, you can drag and drop stuff right into After Effects. So if I had my folder open, um, P drive, there, do not drive, fancy, sound, oops. So here's my clipped, clipped, and clipped. I can drag this right into this uh, sound file or audio folder, and it'll automatically just import it. If you drew something in Illustrator, same thing. I could just drag it and drop it right in there, okay? Um, so there's my audio files. So now I'm going to make my composition. So I'm going to go to new comp. I'm going to say Sarcona, fancy, I don't need Sarcona in here, uh, fancy title card. 1280, 720, 24 frames a second, six seconds at the max, and hit OK. I don't need to worry about the audio yet. I'm going to start setting up my um, title card to look like this without all the blue and orange on this at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to go into my circle, and I'm going to draw a circle. Remember that in um, all the Adobe products, typically you have to hold down some kind of hotkey in order to get the circle and not an um, oval. So I'm going to click that. That seems like a good size for now. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my Move tool and click on the shape layer. My pivot for this is over here. So if you remember, that's going to scale it from that point, right? So I want to hit the Y key, then grab the pivot, and then snap it using control to the center. So now as it scales up, it'll scale right from the center. So I go back to scale, and now it's going to scale right from the center. I'm also going to think about some colors. Um, remember before we talked about getting your uh, color swatches and stuff? Uh, Adobe Color. So if you weren't aware of this, Adobe actually has a tool uh, where you can go onto Adobe site and you can get different color palettes. Um, oh, Explore. Couldn't see it. Uh, so these are all different color palettes that Adobe has on their site that you may want to use. Um, you could also just go and find cool images. Um, actually, I like that one. So I'm going to use this as my color palette. So I'm going to slide this over to my other screen, and I will use that. So I'm going to go to this shape, yes. 
this fill. I'm going to have my eyedropper, and I'm going to grab, I think that, uh, actually, I think the blue would be good there. Let's get the blue. There we go. And I'm not going to put a stroke on this. I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let me go and type my text. So this is going to be, according to my drawing here, 0, 2. Make this bigger. Put that in the middle. And notice how I'm doing all of the layout first before I get into any kind of, uh, of animation. <clears throat> if I did the 0, 2, I did the ball, and I animated each one individually, then I put my lines in and something didn't work, I basically have to go back and redo a lot of the stuff. So I want to do it kind of procedurally. Um, now I've clicked on my pen tool because I need a path coming from here to here to there. And this is not going to have a fill on it, but this is going to have a stroke on it. And the stroke color will be and go with this lighter blue. All right, so there's that shape. Um, now I need a shape for the center of this, so that one should be easy enough. I'm just gonna click off. Um, click here, hold shift, click about there, and then click off. For the top one, I want that to be basically a mirror image of, or the bottom one I wanted to be a mirror, mirror image of the top one. So if I were to just duplicate this, go to my scale and just tell it that the uh, Y is going to be negative 100, it'll flip it over to the other side. So all of our stuff that we're doing, we want to think about what that end result is going to look like. We don't want to half-ass any of our stuff. Um, as I'm drawing any of these, I'm not going to go, you know, like, oops, like that because that looks horrible. You know, if I wanted a curvy line, I want to make sure it's nice and curvy. Um, I want the circle and that to be on top, so I'll move that there. That's cool. I probably want to move all of these, so let me just slide this more in the center. So I'm looking at the spacing here on this side, the spacing here on this side, the spacing above, the spacing below. So that seems pretty good. All right. All right, so that looks like it's working pretty good. That looks pretty close to what my illustration was here, um, except for the fact that these are a lot longer. Um, so I need to adjust that. So let me go to my pen tool, which is G. There we go. And then we'll go to this one. And then we'll go to that. Well, this one, nope, that was four. All right, see, now I ruined the bottom one, so I have to delete it, and then I have to reduplicate it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like, well, we'll probably get it close enough, but it wasn't close enough. There we go. All right, so that's cool. All right, so now I'm going to grab my text tool again, and I'm going to type in my stuff, so... On my drawing, I had title card. I want this to be left justified because it's the left position is going to be the important part. I'm going to shrink this down, and I'm going to pick um, a different version of this Helvetica. Maybe I'll just do regular Helvetica there. Yeah, that's fine. I'm setting up where I want this to show up. So maybe right here in the middle, I'm going to see what that looks like. I'm also going to see what maybe putting it here, lining up the bottom of this line with the bottom of that T, I think that might look better. Yes, I think so. Um, I'm going to duplicate this and just slide this down. And then on the bottom, what do I have here? Sean Sarcona. Sean Sarcona. <gasps> we barely fit. Uh, we're going to shrink this. So let's go to 72. Nice round number. And then we'll zoom in and we'll again adjust it. The top of my H is going to line up with the top of that line. If I need to throw guides in, I can hit Control R. I can uh, pull from my rulers and just slide a guide right here at the start of where I'm putting this. I think over there would be better right there. That's good. 
That way my uh, title card here, I'm going to leave this also at 72 and slide this to start at the same spot. And make sure that this is still, yep, the bottom is still lined up good. Okay. And then make a 1900 is there. So now I'm going to duplicate this. I'll slide it down to here. And this one I'm going to leave right in the middle. I think that one makes sense having it in the middle. Make a 1900. Now I have to look at the spacing of this line to this part of the letter, this line to this part of the letter, and try to emulate that there. So that's what I'm looking for. All of your design principles, even though this isn't uh, in InDesign class or typography, all of those things are important, just as important as they are here as they are there. <clears throat> um, I think I'm actually going to line up this line right with the center of that A. So let's drag this down to there. That looks good. OK. So uh, I'm going to clear my guides. Title card, make a 1900, John Sarcona. Good. And then just to test, my next assignment will be page transitions. And I can see that page transitions will also fit on that line. That's the longest assignment name that we have. OK. So I just wanted to make sure that it worked. And even if I type title card fancy, that works. You don't need to put the fancy part because we should know it's fancy based off of the look of it. OK, so now all my assets are there. I still need a background, too. So I'm going to go and make a new solid. Um, my color for this, I'm going to do, I think that's green. We'll just see what the green looks like in here, or deep cyan. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, I do want to give it a little bit of variation. Um, having a solid color background is fine, but I want to give it some kind of color. So under effect, um, actually, let me duplicate this solid first. Under effect, under um, generate, I'm going to do a gradient somewhere in here. There it is, gradient ramp. Whenever you do an effect on anything, anything from that window, your project tab is here. The effects controls are there. So you see how it automatically opens this other tab. And then here's the settings for that thing that you just put on. Right, um, except it's easier to navigate. <laughs> so I'm going to go to a radial ramp. And then I'm going to slide around these little manipulators. So I want the center point to be at the center. I want the um, uh, end point to be on the corner-ish area here. I'm going to swap the colors. And what this does, it gives me a black and white representation. So um, I could go into this color, and I could pick the colors I want. But what I like to do is have one, one layer that's black and white, one layer that's my color one, and then my black and white one, I'm going to switch my mode to multiply. And then that gives me that gradation. It gives me like a vignette to it. Okay. And then what's neat about this is that if I hit T on this um, top layer, I could then control the opacity of it, making it not as drastic. Okay. So things to keep in mind. So that looks a lot better than just having it like that. Okay. Also, my stuff kind of pops out a bit more. Um, cool. I like the way that's turning out. Um, I think I want to do just a couple more things to this. So I'm going to go to my circle, which I'm going to start labeling these so I can see. This is my circle. Oops. Enter. This is middle line. Enter. This is bottom line. This is the bottom line, and this is top line. And because we're OCD, we'll put the top line on the top and the middle here, the bottom there. Circle two, yes sir. Yes sir. Animate the background, either sliding in, or it could fade in. Typically, I don't like fade ins because there's not a lot of motion to it. I'll have it just slide in somewhere. I'll show you some other ways too that we can do it that are a bit fancier, very similar to kind of like the stuff that Premiere would have. But again, better because it's After Effects. Um, I'm going to go to the circle. I'm going to, um, I need to fix that O2. It looks like it's not centered. No one told me. Uh, I'm going to go to layer. I'm going to go to layer styles. And I'm going to do a drop shadow on my circle. This is just like Photoshop. All those layer styles you have, drop shadows, glows, all of that. Um, I'm going to adjust uh, the distance. I'm going to adjust the size of this. 
go. I don't think I want to adjust the distance. I think I'm going to put the distance right back where it was. And then just adjust the size. Okay, now that feels like that drop shadow is right underneath it. So it looks like it pops off the page. I like that. Under, I clicked on the circle layer and then under layers, layer style, and then you can go to any of those. Just like Photoshop, yeah. Um, and then just like Photoshop too, if I found an effect that I liked, anything that I have here, I can just click on control C, go to the other layer and control V and paste it on there. So I don't want to do this, but maybe I do. Yeah, there we go. And so now it's on all three of those. Or I may want to paste it on one of the texts, edit it, and then adjust it from there. So let's take this dis the size down to like 20. Let's take the size down to 5. Nope, it's not enough, is it? Let's take the spread up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so maybe I do like a little bit on there, not much. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that layer style <clears throat> and then paste it on the other two. There we go. All right, and then the O2 needs to get fixed. Just center that better. All right, that's su not sufficient. It's like a pixel off, right? Uh huh. If you wanted to add a drop shadow to something um, and you animate it, would the drop shadow follow the animation? Yep. Oh, sweet. Yep. Now, it's important where I add that drop shadow. So if I were to um, take everything as one piece, give it motion blur, and then add the drop shadow to that, we'll get some weird effects because it'll actually have drop shadows on the motion blur, which look very odd. Okay, so we always want to do it before we do any animation. Okay. Um, cool. So I like the way this is looking. Um, the O2, maybe let's just try it in black and see what happens. Mm, I like it as white. All right, so I'll leave it there. Okay, so now I'm ready to uh, animate after I hit save. So uh, if I remember, the um, circle is going to blip out, so I'm going to just start there. So I go to my circle. I go to the scale, and the scale right now is 113%. I don't know how I got to 113, but that's where it's at. So I'm going to scoot up to, let's say, 12, set my first keyframe here, rewind to 0, set that to 0. Okay, so now this animates like that. Now you'll see my lines are kind of twitching a little bit. So After Effects has this thing, and we're going to start to see more of it, of... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think what it's called. It's right here. Uh, adaptive resolution, okay? So what it's doing is basically it's trying to play back as fast as it can, and if it can't play back as uh, as fast as we're sliding, it lowers the resolution on everything. Yeah, so I typically turn this off, and you won't see a huge effect. So this little lightning bolt, Harry Potter thing, just turn that off, and then as you click and drag, uh, the lines won't start twitching, Okay. Um, so there's my line going here. Like I mentioned before, I typically want to go a couple frames before, scale it up past where it's going to go, and then bring it down. So, bloop. all right. All right. So uh, let me jump back to here. Let's jump back to this. So uh, create basic shapes and text. That's on there. Uh, animate using ease, speed, graph, and motion blur. Have we done that yet? No. No, right? So, does anyone remember the hot key for making these keyframes eased? F9. F9. Um, and I forget that some people have never used these keys because you didn't have to. Uh, we're not hitting F and 9. We're hitting the function 9 key in the top very row. Or you can right click and go to easy ease right here. Okay. So now these are eased, which is this first one, but they are not speed graphed. Yep, so that's where the graph is, okay? And then we right-click and make sure we're on the speed graph, not the value graph. Now, I, um, I think it was on Matt's computer today. He opened it up, and his graph was already showing. So I think your preferences might follow you with you from class to class. It's not 100%. We'll find out. 
Uh, but regardless, make sure you're on the speed graph because the value graph is going to look completely different. Okay, uh, I'm going to frame stuff and then I'm going to adjust it. I want to imagine what this is going to look like. Part of animation, part of anything we're doing is conceptualizing it in your mind about what it should look like or what you want it to look like and then getting it to do that, playing different iterations. So I'm imagining what does this look like if I started off really fast and then I went really slow at the end or slow and then fast at the end, right? If you don't know what those things look like, then you just try stuff out. So this is going to go what at the beginning? Slow and then fast, right? And then I want to go into the next one with that same mindset. I don't want to go slow, fast, slow, fast. I want to go slow, fast, fast, slow, right? So then I'll push this over to that side. We'll turn the graph off because I just don't like to look at it while I'm animating. And, right? So that feels good. If it didn't feel good, I would swap it. Or if I wanted to see, I would just swap them and see what it looks like. So I like the way that looks, Bloop. OK? Now I'm going to go into my project folder. I'm going to go to my compositions. And this uh, starburst 10 times simultaneous, I'm going to drag that down. And I'm going to put it underneath my circle. We talked about that last time. And there it is, right? So now I'm going to line it up. So I'm going to go to right here. I'm going to grab my starburst. I'm going to slide it over just so I can see where it's at and then slide it over here. Now, if I need to get the exact spot, I can click on the circle, grab my guides, and just drag a guide right to the center of that right there, and the center of this right there. And that way, when I click on this layer, I can see where the center line is, and then just arrow it over until it's lined up. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to look at this and see where the timing of this should be. So. Master animator, that looks perfect already. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> right? We'll just pretend that I'm insane and this is just way down here. Okay. Bloop. Okay, delayed reaction. <laughs> All right, so now let's go to about there. Let's drag this over and then let's see if it works. Perfect. Okay. Sometimes one frame left, one frame right will be the exact spot. You need to develop the eye to look at it and see what is working and what is not working. Just to show you, let me slide it over two frames. Let me zoom back out. Okay, how does that feel? Oops. Too quick, right? Mm -hmm. So we're getting the blip before the thing has even gotten big enough to give us some kind of reaction. So, like I said, one frame or two frames over will change what it looks like. That still feels a little bit too early. Okay, I went past my original point. That still feels good. I think here we're kind of lost it, right? So we have that sweet spot of right about there where it feels like the blip or the uh, circle is causing those lines to pop out. Okay. Now, uh, I can adjust the coloring on those lines several different ways. Uh, one way I can do it is just double clicking this, clicking on this, going up to the stroke, and then using my eyedropper to grab my orange color that I have on the other screen, and then trying to find the tab, fancy title card right here. Okay, that's one way to do it. Let me undo that. Oops, I redo my time layer. So let's put this back to white, it's back to white. Okay. The other way to do it is to click on this, go up to effect, go up to color correction, and then do a hue and saturation to this. Uh, we could also do a, a, a tint, um, but we wouldn't want to do that. A, a hue and saturation would be the way to go in this case. <clears throat> now with this though, I don't get those same options. So if I go to colorize, I take my lightness down and I take my saturation up and I slide this over. I have to kind of visually match up that orange. Okay, so this is pretty close to that orange. Yes, sir. How is it when you do hue and saturation in Adobe Epic that it changes the color from white to whatever, but when you use it in Photoshop, it doesn't change the color? 
They will change the color if you have the color eyes on and you've taken it down, okay? So if I leave the lightness at zero, it's as bright as it's going to get. The brightest value of any color is white. So I have to take the lightness down, then the color will start to play in, okay? Now, this way works if I'm gonna use this multiple times in multiple spots and use different colors. So if this orange color is gonna be orange here, but then blue somewhere else and red somewhere else and whatever, it works pretty good to do it this way. But if this is the only iteration where I'm gonna have this orange color, typically I'm gonna to jump to that starburst composition, change the color here, cause I can just eye drop it and I don't have to worry about anything else, okay? Um, now, keep in mind that I could also duplicate this, rotate it, um, I don't know, 15 degrees? Oh, that is perfect, look at that. Uh, and then that effect also duplicates and then I could give this a different color. And then I could also, let me just slide this in. Remember we had that two frames that has kind of worked? I'm gonna go back one frame. Right, so now we have this kind of layering effect of you know these starbursts. It's too much. Too much is going on. Uh, I'm just going to delete the other one. Uh, that one, yes. And delete the right one also. Good. Okay, so I'm going to do this again the right way. So I'm going to delete the hue and saturation. I'm going to go to fancy burst. Click on this. Click on the stroke. I drop that orange. And I'm not locked to that orange. I can adjust it. It's just my starting point, okay? Cool. All right, so uh, that works. Now, let's look at something else real quick. Well, before we get any further, um, I've gone through and I've animated something. I've eased it. I've used speed graph. Motion blur I add at the very end, okay? There's no reason to have motion blur on at the start of this because it's just gonna slow your station down. Do all your animation at the end. You click it on, verify everything looks good and then go from there. <clears throat> I have sound effects I'm gonna to add to this. I have accents, that's what the burst is. Um, and then obviously we'll render the movie and keep ourselves organized. But I have, some, I have to have some way to kind of keep this thing on track so that it feels like these pieces work together, okay? The speed of one item coming out and the speed of the next item coming out and the next item coming out should have some kind of, of uh, rhythm or beat to how they come out. Um, I don't want one thing to go super fast and then something slow and then fast and then slow. I want things to feel like there's a pace of how this animation plays out, okay? So I'm gonna use this first circle as my guide. So this took 12 frames to come out. So that means everything else should come out within about 12 frames, okay? It might be 11 frames works or 10 frames works, but it's not gonna be like 30 frames for one thing and 10 frames for something else it's gonna be a very consistent speed, okay? Now, as I do that, I have six seconds to get everything onto the screen, keep it there for a couple seconds, and then get everything off the screen, okay? Now, one thing I didn't animate already is the background. And I did that on purpose because I want you to see how it's, it's easy to shift things around once you have stuff set up, okay? So I'm gonna take these two layers here, which are the background, and I'm going to put them into their own layer. I'm gonna group them essentially, okay? So this right here, this starburst 10 simultaneous, that's a grouped thing, that's a, a composed thing. I can do the same thing to these two even after the fact. So I'm gonna grab both of these, I'm gonna hit Control, Shift, and C, and that does pre-compose. Up here somewhere, if you wanna dig through the menus, it's under layer, but Control, Shift, C, pre-compose. Background. I'm gonna say move all the attributes and I'm gonna say okie dokie. Now I have one layer to animate versus having two layers to animate, okay? So I'm gonna to go to uh, position. I'm going to slide this down. We are so close to being there, right there, okay. I'm gonna put this here. Like I said, about 12 frames is how long this is gonna take for each item and then I'll slide this back up into position. You can add another hotkey to your list. It's uh, shift, and this will go a lot faster as you move stuff with that scroll wheel. Um, sometimes it just goes too slow for me. And then I think alt will go even slower if you wanted that. All right, so 360, boom, there it is. 
we go to our easy ease, we go to our graph editor, and we slide this up. I want this to slam into position. Okay. Now I don't want competing things. Right now your eye is competing. Do I look at the background? Do I look at the starburst? What am I looking at? It should go one, two, three, four. One thing happens, another thing happens, another thing happens. So I'm going to take my circle and my starburst. I'm going to go to right where these are about to hit or right where they're hitting, and then I'm going to slide those bars down. So all I do is I take the bars, slide them down, and now that animation plays at that point. Oops, I have to adjust my work area so that I can see the whole thing. Okay, so that feels pretty good. Yes, sir. Right, so you want to do like, right? So, a couple things. We could do two different layers, right, and do it like that. The next thing I'm going to show is how you could do it an easier way. So I'm going to turn this off. That's one way to animate your background. Just like Premiere or um, Avid has this too, there's transitions, okay? So yours specifically, uh, I believe, would be Jaws. Yep. Um, and all of these work in a very similar fashion. There's just a completion slider and then some options. Um, so this one, I clicked the wrong one. I clicked image wipe. I don't know why I clicked image wipe. Effect, transition, Jaws. There we go. Uh, so here we go. <laughs> right. Uh, and then we can choose what kind of stuff. Do you want to have blocks? Do you want to have waves? Do you want to have uh, roboclaws? There we go. Just adjust the settings, right? There's a height, there's a width, something there will do it. Okay? And so now we would just animate this one attribute completion just like I animated position. So it's not even like you really animated the background here, right? It's just like you focus it. Right, I'm just animating this effect doing that. Okay, so we do that. Um, I've added an effect. So to get to the effects, you'll see there's a tab here. Um, I'm going to use one of our hotkeys from the hotkey video. If you don't know what it is, you can watch a hotkey video, which you should have done. It's you. And I'm going to adjust this. There we go. Uh, because of the direction that it's going, um, it's going from 100 to 0, so it goes down. It's confusing. <laughs> Good catch. All right, there we go. So, whoop. Okay, so now we're getting a flow. One thing happens, then the, zero, then the ball happens, now the zero 02 needs to pop up. Now I'm going to have to um, find some time here because um, the background, the ball, the zero 02, the line for the title card, the line for MAC at 1900, the line for Sean Sarcona, and then those three pieces of text. That's nine different things I have to animate. And if each one is half of a second, that's how many seconds? Four and a half, right? Okay. So I could do that, but I think that would be an incredibly boring animation to just sit there and watch like one thing after another thing after another thing for four and a half seconds. Okay. So some things we will have come out as a group. Right now, I'm still not there yet. Okay. So I'm mentally preparing for all of that stuff. So zero two, I'm going to animate this coming into frame. Um, so I'm going to go here after this is blipped. And I'm going to slide the 0, 02 down because that's where I want it to start. And I'm going to, um, oops, I spent so much time getting it in position. I'm going to scoot up to 112. I'm going to set the position for this. I'm going to scoot back to 1 and slide this down. And then I'm going to do my easing. Notice it's not invisible, it's still just hanging out there. But I do all of my stuff at the same time. And again, I have to make that work area bigger so I can see it. All right. I don't like how that is going um, fast at the end. I want this to go fast at the beginning and slow at the end. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to go right before those keyframes. I'm going to slide it up just a hair. So it kind of floats back into position. 
Okay, and then I'm going to soften that transition at the end of this, I think. It is rough, yeah. So let's scoot that down a little bit more. And I'm not going to do any major graph work here because it's only a few frames. Uh, I just want to make sure it's not, you know, crazy. There we go. That's better. Maybe a little bit longer up, so I'm just going to scoot that a little bit further apart. There we go. That feels better there. And maybe I'll grab both of these and scoot both of these over. And then scoot that one over. So you can see how I'm, I'm tweaking the keyframes. It's not a matter of just like set it and forget it. Uh, it's not a uh, rotisserie. Anyone knows a commercial? No one? Set it and forget it. Oh my god. <clears throat> I'm really old apparently. There's two references that you guys have not gotten this semester so far and I'm keeping track. All right. <laughs> The other one was uh, Office Space, right? You guys have never seen Office Space. All right, so I need to take my 0, 2, my circle, I need to cut it out. So I'm going to duplicate this circle. I'm going to slide it above the 0, 2. And I'm going to go to the 0, 2, set the track match to be an alpha. That's what I showed last time about how I'm going to get that to be transparent. OK, now I do see. Right there, it's kind of fading in. Why do you think it's fading in? Because of the drop shadow. Because of the drop shadow. So it's using that drop shadow as part of the transparency for it. I don't think I want that. I want it to look like it's coming right out of it. So I'm going to open up Circle 2, go to my layer styles, and I'm just going to delete the whole layer style. I don't need any of that. There we go. I like this. It comes out of, you know, right inside the circle. All right, good. So this feels pretty good. Um, now I'm going to animate the lines, and I'm going to do each line as uh, at the same time, but I'm going to offset them a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one, and I'll just copy and paste that to the other ones. So 112 is where this is going to start. So I'm going to drag all three of these lines down to 112. That's where they're going to start. Consider each one of these um, layers here like you would in Premiere, like you would in video editing, as each one of these is a different piece of footage. And all we're doing is just adjusting when that piece of footage is coming in. Mm -hmm. Could you um, like drop or copy and paste the, the animation from the other one to there? Yes. Oh. So I could. I could actually go into my other composition, copy that, um, that trim effect, and paste it on, the, on this. And then just adjust keyframes. Um, at, eventually, you'll get to the point where it's just Faster to do it here, I guess. Um, so I'm going to go to Add. I'm going to go to Trim Path. I'm going to open up my Trim Path here. And I think with these, I'm going to go with, instead of uh, 12 frames to get out there, I'm going to go with 6 frames. Okay, These are kind of shorter, not as important pieces of animation. So I think that I'm going to go with 6 frames for this. So I'm going to say, uh, which one am I going to animate? Okay, I'm going to animate the end. There we go. Oops. So I'll start it at zero. I'm going to go up six frames. So I'm looking on this. You can't see where I'm pointing. This thing right here. And I'm going to go up to 118. And then set that to 100. All right. And then same thing. Ease it up. And speed graph it out. I think this way. I think I want to go faster first. There we go. Yep. Good. All right, cool. Uh, now I'm going to rewind this back to 12 here. I'm going to click on the trim path and just copy it. So just control C. Go to these two and paste them. And now I should get all three of those doing the same thing. Right? So right now they're all in sync. They all three lines happen at the same time. I'm going to then just offset these a little bit. So um, just for um, hierarchy's sake, top to bottom, just one frame. That's all I moved each layer over. Right? Maybe two frames. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, I like that. Uh, and then I need to get my Sean Sarcona MACA and title card. And again, they should be in the same order that I have them in here. Okay, so this is done around 116. 
So that's when these are going to come in. So title card first, it's just going to slide from the left side to the right side. Yes. So I'm going to go to position. I'm going to click there. And then slide that over. And actually, I'm going to slide this a bit further over than I need to. There we go. OK. So I'm going to ease it. I'm going to put the speed at the start of this. There we go. OK. So let's make sure I have 116 here. Uh, 202, so that'll be, uh, I'm going to round this to 204. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty good for that one. Then I'm going to go to my Make a 1900, do the same thing. Okay, I don't need to worry about the position of this uh, yet, like where it is in the timeline. I just need to slide it over. So I'm just going to bring this over here. Yes, just like I did for the 02, I need to add a mask for each one of these. Okay. And I'm doing this kind of the long way so you can see one at a time. Um, but typically, I would just animate all three of these at the same time, edit their graphs at the same time, and it would be a lot easier to do it that way. Uh, about there, I think. Ease this. Oops. That. All right. So now I'm going to offset this one, offset that one. Notice how I'm lining up the keys here start. And then when this one's ending, the next one's starting. And when that one's ending, the next one's starting. And now I'll do my masks for these. So I'm going to go to the end of this and just create my masks. So this mask will be right here. Uh, no stroke, don't need that. But I do need to have a fill on it. And then I'm just going to put the pivot here. I don't need my guides anymore. Clear those. You know, and I'm just going to then duplicate it and then slide it down and scoot it over. And then I'm going to duplicate this one and slide that down. There we go. All right, so now I have the top one, or the middle one here will go on top of MACN 1800. This one will go on top of Sean Sarcona. And that one is on top of title card. The mask is always the layer above what it's going to be masked out. So then track mat the title card, track mat um, the uh, make a 1900 track match Sean Sarcona. It is fancy, right? Okay, now I still have some other uh, blippy things or, or accent pieces I can add to this. It's the same process, just adding those other pieces on there. I think that's good enough for this one as far as uh, accents. I like that accent. I think other ones might just kind of clutter it up. So I'm not even going to worry about the other line ones um, that I kind of planned here. I don't think I want that. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so uh, all of my pieces of information are out by 312. So like I said, you want to keep it here for one second, two seconds, something like that, so the viewer can process what they've just seen. Um, and you'll notice that I have until six seconds to get everything off the screen. So if I allow this for one second, I'm now at 412. If I allow it for two seconds, I'm at 512, and I only have 12 frames to get everything off of here. So I'm actually going to go to maybe, let's say, five, and then actually, let's go to 412. At 412, I'm going to get rid of everything, or start getting rid of everything. So I'm just going to um, see what I want to get rid of. I'm going to go to how am I going to get rid of this. So originally, my plan was this. Um, 
everything's just going to kind of retract back into where it was. Okay, that was the original plan. Uh, I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to have <clears throat> the line go back into the zero two, and when the line goes back into the zero two for the title card, the title card is just going to like fall off the screen. Okay, and then the 1900 do the same thing. This Sean Sarkhan will do the same thing, and at the end, the zero two and the background will just fall. Like everything will just fall down. Okay, so uh, the start of this is going to be my lines. These three here. So I'm going to hit uh, U to see their animations. I'm going to um, cheat here. I'm going to copy their keyframes, paste their keyframes, and then right click and do uh, keyframe assistant time reverse. So that takes my two keyframes and just swaps them, right? So now it animates from here to there. My new keyframes are now animating from here back to in, OK? So uh, just focusing on that line at the top, you'll see it animated out. And now it's going to animate back in. Okay. So again, I can. What was that? Oh yeah. I think that should switch everything. Yeah. There we go. So it's there too. Yep. So it out. It reverses the whole bit. So now I can copy these. Um, I'm going to go to you know a little bit inward, just like I did in the other one. Paste it. Copy these. Go a little bit inward. And then paste that. Oops, and I didn't time reverse them, so that's why it looks weird. Time reverse, and time reverse. And this works for like a whole set of keyframes, which is awesome. Cool. Let me see if I like that. Yeah, that's good. OK. So now, as this one starts retracting, um, here we can have overlapping animations. Because the end of it, nobody needs to see the content as it's coming out. So we can overlap stuff. So I'm going to uh, take my title card here. And I'm going to animate it falling down. So I'm going to say right here, you're going to start animating. So I put in a little diamond. Um, and this is where I'm, I I'm going to do all three of these at the same time, actually. And I'll just adjust it. So diamonds for everyone. And then we scoot up a little bit. And then each one of these things is then just going to fall straight down. There we go. And by falling, apparently they disappear uh, because of because of my mask, exactly. Okay, so I have to switch my mask in this case because of how I'm deciding to do this. So uh, I'm going to turn the mask back to no track mat so we can see this. And what's happening is my text only exists when it's inside this area. I'm going to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, yes. When I do the track mat, it just makes it invisible. Okay, so it just takes the shape from a, automatically above the area that you right? Yep. Okay. Yep, and you can... In, sure yep, and in this case, it'll it, the way we're doing it here, it only does the layer above it. So if I wanted to layer way up here, I wanted to reuse it 15 times. You would have to copy it. Right. Um, on our, not the next assignment, but the one after that, we'll get into using a mask from any layer. Okay. Okay. Uh, this way we understand it first. So I'm going to move this over to the side here like this. Okay. And then I'm going to change my track mat. Instead of alpha, I'm going to do alpha inverted. So that means that anything outside of that box, it, the text will exist. But when it's in the box, it won't exist. Okay. It's essentially the same thing. It's just in a different setup. Okay. Let's scoot that right there. Let's scoot this one right here. And then we will alpha invert, and then we will alpha invert. OK. OK, so that still looks the same. But now when they fall down, they actually fall down, and we see them falling down. It was fast. It was like too fast, wasn't it? I think so. Uh, so let's make this a little bit more room here. Let's go up to like that. OK, that feels better. And I'm going to scoot these off so they're all offset a bit. Cool. Now, just like I did the other ones where I scaled it up past where it was going to go, I'm actually going to move these up right before they fall down. OK? So I'm going to go up, or I'm going to go past this timeline here, 
grab my title card and move it above it. I'm going to go past this one, grab my 1900, and move it above it. I'm going to go past this and move that above it. Now you'll see why. Oops, it's still too quick. Just a bit. There we go. All right, I think I need to adjust those graphs too. I want them to, um, all right, we're getting confusing if we look at all three. There we go. Uh, the speed I put at the start of this, the speed should really be at the end of that. If your graph ever confuses you, you can always delete the keyframes, re-add them, and it might make it easier for you to see what's going on. Oops. There we go, that feels a little bit better. I'm gonna still adjust some stuff. All right, good. It could, it might also be cheesy though. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna add one more thing to this, which is rotation, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna add some rotation right here. I'm gonna say set a keyframe for rotation. And then right about there, I'm going to have this kind of rotated like that. And then here, add a bit more rotation on this like that. Oh, it's like stuck at the bottom. <laughs> and then we'll just push that down further so we don't see it. Actually, I'm going to go really far. Um, or I'll just change the rotation here so it goes the other way. There we go. That flattens out a little bit more. There we go. That's better. So I could do the same thing to the other ones. I'm just going to copy this rotation. Go to that one's rotation and paste it. Go to this one's rotation and paste it. Scoot it down so it matches. And then the rest of the process is going to be essentially the same thing, okay? Scaling the two in, whatever else. Yes, sir. I would do that too, oh, okay. right? Um, just for time's sake, I'm not going to go into that, right? Um, for time's sake of the lecture, not time's sake of the assignment. Um, so I would still go back and edit the graphs, easy ease all my rotations. Literally everything that you animate um, is going to have easy ease, speed graph, and motion blur. Those three things will be on every single one of your assignments. Um, so now I'm going to add my audio in here. So uh, I think I want to use the whooshing. So um, I can hear that sound effect, right? So I think right here where this comes up, that might be a cool like whoosh sound. If I hit L twice, I can see the graph. That peak is where I want to line up with that, that action, OK? And again, one frame this way or one frame that way will play into what this, uh, how that works. That feels good, but let's just see it a frame back here. Sometimes you have to look at it a million times. Let's see. All right, scoot it up two. Yeah, it's there's about three frames. It feels like that could work. Yeah, I like it there. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, now, some things just, you know, like we talked about, the cheesy sound effects. So this one is a doorbell. I'm going to put it in roughly the same spot. I'm going to turn off the other one, and let's just see what it looks like, see what it sounds like. <laughs> right? So that could also work, um, but we give a different kind of feel for it. <laughs> let's do both. That seems Right? And two sound effects in this case could actually work. What does the door panel sound like? get all these in here. It's just, this is a cluster bomb of sound effects. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot. Let's see what just the one is. Uh, end of my work area. Right? So you can create some pretty cool effects or pretty cool uh, triggers for these sound effects and how everything is kind of playing out. Um, simple things. There's nothing in, insane here. I could have also found a six second audio clip that was a nice soothing sound or something that kind of went with the beat of my animation. Um, and I could tie that into how I'm animating my stuff. 
if you look at one of that is getting those sound effects to work with your animation. Um, it's not enough that we can create a cool video or a cool animation. We're connecting with people. That's our goal is to connect with people. Having that audio that we can kind of like, it's a, a good song or it's a good beat or a good whatever. And then we have our video and we're linking these two things together. That's what we're doing here. So when we see this, oops, I turned it down too much, right? We're connecting them with that. So depending on what we want, that works. I like the ding, actually. <laughs> if I had glass shattering, maybe that one would be it. All right. So we'll pretend that all of that other stuff is good. Uh, I'm going to hit my switches and modes. I'm going to motion blur the crap out of this. Uh, and then hit play, and then we'll see what we get. Now you'll see <clears throat> some disgustingness, right? <laughs> so the motion blur on my text doesn't work very good when we have that drop shadow. And I thought it wouldn't be as bad, but apparently it is. So I think I want to go down to where I have my drop shadows. And there it is. I'm going to take the drop shadow um, mode, and maybe I'll try this as a color burn. Nope, that's definitely not it. A darken. Darken doesn't look too bad. And then maybe I'll take this to 50. All right, that doesn't look bad. So that's what I'm going to do for the other ones. So I'm just going to copy this drop shadow. Go to my other ones. And I'm going to delete. And where's my other one? There it is. And delete. And then I can paste that on there. All right. So it doesn't look as bad being, you know, that way. I can probably dim it a little bit more. I'll probably tweak it some more. OK. All right, so once I'm done, I'm satisfied with the way this is turning out. Um, I've also verified that I have motion blur on all my stuff. So let's look at these lines real quick. Do I see motion blur on the lines? No. no. So why don't I? Yes, it's from a separate composition, right? So on this composition right here, this isn't actually moving, right? This is basically just a video. I can't take a video that has no motion blur, drop it in and just say motion blur. It doesn't work like that. So I have to go into that composition, turn on this motion blur. Then when I come back in here, now it'll have motion blur, OK? Stuff to pay attention to because you'll miss out on those little things. There you go. Also, they're still sitting there. What are you doing sitting there? Um, sometimes it'll do this with motion blur where um, you know it's over, but they're still there. OK? So all I'm going to do is go to the end of this, and then hold Alt, and then right bracket. And that will just stop it from showing up. There we go. Sometimes it'll just do stupid stuff like that. We just work around it. All right, so we're going to pretend that I am finished with this. Um, typically, what I like to do at the end of all my compositions is I take this composition, uh, first organize it. So let's drop these into the correct composition folders. Uh, then I'm going to take that fancy title card, and I'm going to drop it onto a new composition. Now what that does is it puts that comp into another composition all flattened out, nice and neat. Now the reason I do this is so that if I wanted to do any effects on top of it, I can do that. If I decided I wanted to go into my color correction, go into my um, hue and saturation, and just like slide my hue over, I'm doing this to the entire composition. OK, so if I decided I want to do a different version of this, boom, there I have a different version of it. OK, my whites are still white. My, I'm now pink and whatever else. Um, you can also do stuff like, you know, just like you would think like in Photoshop, like if I were to duplicate this, oops, and then I offset the color some, and then I'm going to jump back to the beginning here. I'm going to offset this layer like two, and I'm going to offset this layer two. And then I'm going to set these top modes to, let's just try add and see what happens. See what it looks like. Uh, right? These two don't need sound. 
Okay, so that could be a cool way to kind of show off my stuff too. Um, I'm not really digging all of it. I Maybe. Think some of the motion blur you can see this anyway. Right, I can get rid of some of the motion blur too, but that would be adjusting some of my other settings. But. You can't really read the numbers. Right. But again, this is a cool kind of way you can do some of your stuff. It doesn't have to be all of it either. Okay. Yeah, it is on the background. Um, you just take your one comp and drag it onto this composition button. And that will just drop it in there. And the more we do stuff, we'll see we're constantly like doing this composition uh, inside a composition, inside a composition, sometimes multiple layers deep. Okay. Um, so when I'm ready to render, I go and render my stuff out, same way that we talked about before. You can jump into that video if you need to. Um, and that's it. So I would make sure everything's organized here. Compositions are in their folders. Audio's in their folders. Um, I also like to make sure that my final composition, which is, in this case, it's this one. I label it at the end with the word final. And then stuff that I don't need, like comp three is empty, I can delete that. Comp two has my testing stuff, I'll leave that. Comp one has more testing stuff. Stuff I apparently don't have on here. Oh, just that, yep, there we go, okay. So I'm gonna label these test line and test uh, blip. And now I know that I have all of those things set up. So then my turn in for this is going to be this folder it should have my movie rendered out. So that's where my movie will be. It'll have my sound effects right here. It'll have my After Effects file. And then any planning that I've done. So my planning I did in Photoshop right here, I'm turning that in as well. If you have it on a piece of paper, staple it to your stuff and then you'll turn that in. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yep, I, I'm expecting at the earlier stages that we will have some adjustments to things. Like on mine, I didn't do um, these little swooshes here. So I'm not going to go back and adjust this. It's just I didn't like the way they looked afterwards. Okay. Um, and that's that. Any questions on that yet? No. I know it's a lot.